Hi guys. We made it. Our little home sweet home Airbnb for the week. Our host graciously let us check in a couple hours early, which is always nice after you drive a long drive. seating. I'm just gonna unpack a little bit. Little one bathroom, two bedrooms. Lots of sleeping area, that's for sure. Now we just gotta wait for Jeff and Amber to get here. Trying to get your hat. Oh. Got some new gear. <laughs> Trying to get this boat organized so we can go out. We're gonna go give Scallop in a try for a little bit. It's a little a little late in the afternoon. We checked in at one o'clock. It's probably a little after two now. We're gonna go a couple hours and try to get some scallops. Yes. See what happens. That's the heavy one. I haven't put my computer out of it. All right, y'all, we have got to the scallop grounds. The most important and number one rule about coming in close on a scallop ground is look for dive flags and look for divers. I cannot stress enough about the safety of boating when out and coming in close to other boats to anchor up and jump in the water. We all wanna have a good time, but the most important thing is just be aware of your surroundings, listen for boats. It happened up in Crystal River this year. There was a, um, a snorkeler that was ran over by a boat um so it's just you know common sense but yes mom soapbox over um so basically what we look for is we just kind of look for like patchy grass um i like the sandy areas because if i see a flounder or something i keep an eye out for it and then i can go back and i can spear it um pretty choppy a little bit windy um, it's kind of calmed down here a little bit more in the bay um, but we're ready to jump in the water what's the water temp today I didn't see it on your Ninety. <gasps> 90 degrees Holy moly, that's gonna be a warm one. Okay, well, I'm ready to get in. I'm ready to go get me some scallops. What about you, babe? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. What you got there? <laughs> this is my little mini, my little mini gun. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be badass, wouldn't it? <laughs> little mini gun. Um, but it's just, I mean, it's literally like just right for me it's a perfect flounder gun it's a perfect flounder gun and i've actually shot a, quite a few with this one so and these ones are a little bit easier to pull back for me than on like the big koas that we have so a little bit more manageable
Okay, so we have a one gallon bucket here. The rules are uh, no more than two gallons per person, no more than 10 per vessel, 10 gallons um, of scallops per vessel starting in July. So we're officially in July. We're gonna abide by those rules. Um, they do ask that you keep the ones that are bigger than two inches, um, any of them smaller than that, like this guy. Eh, he's kind of borderline um, on being a little bit too small. So two inches or bigger, just that, for courtesy. That's courtesy, it's not a law. You can keep whichever ones you want, but. So in about the half hour that we were out there, we got about a half a gallon. Not bad. I'll say like three quarters. Three quarters, eh. You're an over. I'm a fisherman. Everything's always bigger and more. That's true. <laughs> bigger fish stories. All right, your lives. In there. All right, so. We like to put ours in the water for, oh, it doesn't look like it's filled very much. I don't care. There they are. Some of them are actually oh, swimming. Yeah, they're swimming. A lot of people don't realize that scallops can actually swim, and they do. Oh, they, you got another shell. Oh my goodness. Maybe they're molting. All right, so guys, I do have a little bit of method of my madness when we come out here and scallop. It is, I try to find areas that are not crazy deep. And I have a lot of areas marked on my GPS here from prior years where we found scallops. And by no means does that mean you're gonna find scallops there again. But I mark the areas that I like the grass, where the grass isn't, that crazy, crazy thick eelgrass, it's kind of, there's areas where you can see down through it easier. And there's also grass here that's more, it looks like brown spaghetti. And for some reason, I find a lot of scallops in that grass that's that brown spaghetti looking grass. So I find patches and I mark them where it's a mixture of the spaghetti grass, I don't know the technical term for it, that's what I call it, and also the eelgrass. Um, I found scallops and just about everything out here. Um, I've been scalloping here for, oh geez, well over 20 years. So in my opinion, I think the scallops move with the salinity. Um, scallops do move. A lot of people don't know that, who's never done it. They think they're just shells that just lay there, but they actually do, I guess you'd call it swim. They open and close their shell real fast and they just spurt out water and they actually move. So it seems to me in my experience that if you have a lot of rain, the scallops tend to go out a little further into a little bit deeper water. I think they move with the salinity of the water a little bit. And if you don't get a lot of rain, it seems like you can find them in a little bit more. So that's been my experience with it. So if you come over here to do that, keep that in mind that if it has been a lot of rain in the area you're scalloping, try it out a little deeper. Instead of you know staying in that three, four foot mark, go out to the five, six foot, seven foot. It sucks to scallop that deep, especially, I don't know how to say this, but if you're older and can't hold your breath and you don't want to constantly go up and down, then sometimes they're just in that deeper water and you can't do anything about it. But we just found that half a gallon in about 30 minutes. This is probably three quarters of a gallon of scallops. Um, but you, the, the trick to this is you really need to move around. If you jump in an area and you swim around for 10 minutes and you're only finding like one or two, you need to get back in the boat and move. Even if it's 100 yards, it doesn't matter. Just keep moving, especially when it's this late in the season. It's, uh, we're almost, what month are we? We're almost uh, August, I think we're August 1st. Um, so a lot of them have been picked over, but it's got to keep bouncing around. That's all there is to it. It's not rocket science to do this. So hopefully we'll get on some more here. We're going to try another spot or two before we head in and we're going to cook up some scallops tonight. Ain't that right? Yeah. Sorry. I had a, I have a teenager that's signing up for college. Yeah. We got our, our kid is going. Our kid's going to college, so he's been trying, we've been helping him try to figure out classes and scheduling and all that. So it seems like just yesterday I was changing the kid's diaper. <laughs> There's oh, anyway. scallop. This chick right, right here doesn't look uh, old enough to have an 18 year old. 
now. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. There's a scalloper no, right seen. there. Got to keep your eyes peeled for these. Yeah, you'll get a, occasional morons that get a haul little bit. ass through everybody. And there's been a lot of injuries over the years. And if you're in the scallop grounds, and when I say the scallop grounds, the area where there's a bunch of boats, slow down. There's no freaking reason to be going 30, 35 miles an hour zigzagging through boats. That's just ignorant. And if the man sees you, you're definitely going to get stopped. Don't get stopped and don't be ignorant. I think this looks like a good spot, babe. What do you think? I reckon. It's shallow. But. <laughs> babe. Day two. Hey, baby. Steen Hatchy. Yes, sir. We ready to get on them scallops. Y'all ready? Scallops, as they would say around here. Scallops. Scallops. Well, we just got a little pile of people. Well, that's because you stopped right. This, this is my spot. I had it marked on my GPS. I'm going to politely ask them to move. <laughs> get out of I my yard. Get out. get out of my yard. <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> what you doing? I am anti-fogging with some Akoa anti-fog hopefully this one works better than my spit <laughs> How you doing there, Scallop Queen? You got spit all over your face. <laughs> Hold up that sack. Let's see your sack. Damn, she got a gun too? Yeah, she's, she's got the spear gun, a sack. She ain't around. I'm telling you. Hold that sack up there, let's see what she got. Oh yeah, you did oh, pretty good. Oh, you killed it, sir. Did I lose a titty? Almost. Almost. I just lost a booby. Almost. I haven't worn this suit in a long time. All right, we're gonna see how we did. First stop, we've oh, been scalping about an hour. My God. <laughs> Have you ever seen a baby scallop? Holy mackerel! That was, was that so down in the bucket? Cute. That was down in the bucket. One of them just gave life birth, and we didn't know it. <gasps> oh my gosh! I've never seen a live or a baby scallop before. That's why, because they're so tiny. It's, it's so little. It's still alive, you can throw it back in. No, it's been sitting in the bucket. It ain't uh, alive. You killed, you killed a baby. I didn't mean to. Oh, man. Don't make me 
Are you going to eat it? I know. That would make a, <laughs> that would make a cute that would make a cute little yeah. pendant. Soft shell. Stick them in the room. All right. Let's see. So let's see how we did. Let's just bag the first one up there. Looks like he probably got close to a gallon, maybe three quarters of a gallon. So cool. Yeah, about three quarters of a gallon. So today we can keep eight gallons. That one. That's your sack. Was that mine? Yeah, you, you got the most by far. Not by far, right. by probably by like ten. I'm gonna hold that off to the side. Okay. That one's amber. Yep. Yeah, they have the orange bags. We have the red bags. That's all right, that's a gallon, just dump that. One gallon. <laughs> Look at him go! Yep. That's cool, I'm free! That's my sack. Oops, sorry baby. You and Amber got about that much. We can still add some more to it. Well, I know, but I wanted oh, to okay. see how many. Right, we'll Two gallons. Sarah's large, full stack. I was pulling two and three of them up at a time. Yeah, that's because you areas are really good. That's because I went down. And I think I've got to get level with that. Seating. Sarah, almost, that's almost a gallon by yourself. We'll call it a gallon. So Good we got, first spot, guys. Yeah. yeah. We got three gallons. Yep. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna move back. This is a pretty good area right here. It's uh that got that real good sporadic like moss and eel grass. The moss is nice because you can kind of see them in it a lot easier. So we're just gonna move back about 75 yards just to work a new area. Yeah. See how it goes. Let's do it. See how we did. That's that must be Jeff's sack. Yeah, Jeff got a good one. Jeffy's sack. You like my big jack? It's a nice big sack. Almost a gallon. Almost a gallon. Which one's Amber's sack? Oh, this is Amber's sack. The other orange bag. You got a good feed? That's a whole gallon. That's a gallon. So how many is that? Five and a half, five and three quarters. All right. Sarah's sack? Yeah, I didn't get that many this year. About a half? Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy got a big old sack too. Yeah, Jimmy got it. Really? Yeah. Jim, I'd say you got a gallon. Yeah, probably got a yourself. gallon. That bucket's full. That's a probably a gallon and a quarter. Uh, six. Yeah, so we're just too shy, basically. Um, our limit. I think we're all getting a little hungry. Yeah, that's enough scallops. Ready to head in? Yeah, I want to go make some burgers or something. Yeah. Fly him high, baby. Any last words? That was the perfect day. Perfect weather. Little waves. Nothing too crazy. Not a whole lot of boats out here. That's the great part about being out here during the week because there's not that many people out here, but there's still enough in case you get into a pickle. There's other boats around, but. Yeah, I'm ready to head back in. Let's we'll go, go cook eat. some more scallops and some burgers. Let's go eat. All right, we made it back. 
putting the scallops on ice. And why do we do that? So that way they open. Right oh. now, this little booger is closed. He ain't gonna open with no knife unless you really try hard, and I don't like trying hard. I like to make my life a little easier. So you put them on ice. The shells will open up after they've been in the ice for a little while, and then we can get to cleaning. Usually I would say about 45 minutes to an hour um, on ice to get them nice and happy. All right, guys, we're back at the Airbnb at the cabin, and they have this really cool little room downstairs um, underneath the house that's all screened in. The no seams here can be atrocious, and cleaning scallops out there and not in a screen room is a little bit difficult. Let's get to it. Um, we bought these Dexter knives. One, because we like to buy things that are made in the USA. Um, but two, they're ergonomical. They fit your hand really well, and they're a little bit more of like a curve shape. Um, some of the other scallop knives are like straight across, and I like this one because it's got a little bit of a curve. I think that these are probably more for oyster I, Yeah, shucking. I think they were sold as clam or oyster knives, but they work really, but really good for they're amazing. scallops. And if, if I find them on Amazon, I'll put a link below for them, but they're by far probably the best scallop. Let me get a little closer. Probably the best scallop. And turn it sideways so they can see the little lip on the front of it. Yeah, there you go. So it's, it's got a curved tip on it, and it makes it, uh, for cutting this, the inside of the meat out, really, really easy. All right, so I'm going to give you a little quick little rundown. You got two sides of the shell. You got a dark side. You flip it over. It's a light side. I'm right-handed. I hold the shell in my left hand. If I hold it with the dark side up, you'll notice that inside the meat is more towards that right hand side. All right, these are the guts. We're gonna just go in and I like to just come in like this and I cut that meat right off the top shell here. So you're scraping that top shell? Yeah, trying to get. So the dark shell you're scraping with Correct. that curved blade. And then with the curved blade, I just gently go around all the guts and then I take my knife right alongside of that white meat right there. You can see that. And then I just gently pull down around like this. You'll have to forgive me. This is my first time in a little bit in a year. Boom. Done. Let me get a close up of that. Looks pretty good. Yeah. And then you just give it another scraper. Correct. Now, on the scallop, which we'll clean these, you can see this little white part of the... Let me get a little closer so we can see what we're talking about. That white muscle. The whole thing's white, but there's a brighter white, harder piece right there where her thumbnail is. And it's better to put that on a cutting board and cut that white part off. Correct. Because that it's makes... It's a little tough. The scallop a little bit tough yeah that little tiny piece you just shaved off of there so you have off white and white white cut that bright white um, part of the muscle off you'll see that all of my most of my scallops see how they've opened up nicely and then that allows me to go in and get these oh, I didn't take a shot of all these things so, so yeah so once they're on ice they've been on ice for how long uh, it's probably been about an hour and a half now um, see how this one isn't quite open yet. He may just not be cold enough because he was on top. So I shoved him down in the ice a little bit more. That one's kind of the same way. It's definitely warmer being on the bottom. Warmer on the bottom? It's cold. <laughs> on the bottom. Oh dear. All right. So one more then, time. Break that shell off. Come in. Go around the circle, gently scrape the white meat and grab it with your thumb and the knife and it just, all the guts pull right off. Look who you've done this before. I've done it a few times. <laughs> Again, see how peaceful and quiet it is and sometimes when people use the um, vacuum cleaners, what they'll do is they'll just come in with a little scallop knife like this they'll take that top shell off 
and then they take this wet dry vac and they go around the meat like that and it sucks all of these out but all you hear is the the vacuum you can't talk to each other you can't have a good time it's just obnoxious in my opinion but you know to each their own this was actually a pretty small scallop shell but look at the size of this meat for that scallop he's a good that's a good size yeah these are bay scallops so they're not big giant sea scallops like you would find like in the grocery stores so you need a few extra more of these in order to make a meal you can't just make a meal out of four of them you're gonna need a little bit more than that so plan accordingly Are you going to help me or what? Oh, I'm going to help you. All right. I was just wondering if you knew what you call a woman with children that cleans scallops. No, not another joke. What? A woman with kids that, that clean scallops. What's she called? A mother shucker. A <laughs> mother shucker. <laughs> Is that what you are? <laughs> I'm a mother shucker. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dad joke. <laughs> that was look, just in time for the dad joke. Yep. Got a rise out of him. What are you talking about? What's going on in there? We got is, a rise. Is that is that a thing? I think so. Oh my goodness. It's probably the the organ. The organ. <clears throat> this can get a little messy. And also not for like the weak stomachs if you can't handle it then um steen hatchie does have a lot of um mother shuckers actually one of them i think is called a mother shucker um yeah there's rachel shucking shack there there's a few signs around town so if you don't want to clean them you can drop them off to somebody and they charge by the pound to, to clean them for you right so with the scallops tonight we're going to be kind of pan roasting them pan roasting pan searing them with some um, bacon and um, onions and we have some chicken that we're going to throw on the grill the chicken uh, we are marinating in that um, bourbon infused vinegar balsamic vinegar so i'm really excited to try that that's going to be really good, I think. We'll Smells good anyways. We'll meet you back in the kitchen. I got some shucking to do. Yeah. Can't let you shuck all by yourself. Yeah, that would not be. You know what you call somebody who shucks by themselves? A lonesome shucker? A lonely mother shucker. <laughs> Boy, you are full of them tonight. Got these beautiful chicken breasts. Marinated in some chicken rub and some balsamic vinegar infused with bourbon. See how it goes. Put that on the grill and smoke it. <laughs> Mom joke. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Those tongs are ridiculous. There's some long. really long tongs. What they say about a guy has long tongs. Tongue to tongue, tongue, tongue. <laughs> it's the tongue song? Yeah. I agree. I'm going to go up and start the teriyaki noodles and prep the scallops. Let's go. So we put, um, Jim actually put together the bacon and the onions. I'm going to render down this bacon first. Um, he just chopped it up into little pieces so that way they're little flakes. And put that there. Mm -hmm. 
And then once that cooks down a little bit, then we're gonna add in the onions and the scallops. And we're gonna have us a little side dish to our chicken. All right guys, our bacon has gotten a little bit on the brown side. I don't want it to overcook and turn into like little pieces of bacon ash. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slide these onions in, give them a little stir. They'll cook up pretty quick. And then we're gonna throw in the scallops here in just a few minutes. Look at how beautiful that bacon is. My goodness. So they're eating scallops this way. Normally I just throw some blackening season in them with a little bit of butter. I'm like, let's do some bacon and onion. Because everything tastes good with bacon and onion. <laughs> All right, now get to cleaning them scallops. Let's go. I'm hungry. Who do you think you're talking to you like that? Yeah, I'm hungry. I'm hungry looking at that right there. Mm. <laughs> Damn, girl. You got it going. Oh. Stop. Mm. All right, guys, I'm just getting the little meats cut off. The little white part that we talked about earlier. You could see it better maybe in the kitchen light here. Um, but I'm just going to take that knife and I'm just going to shave that off again that makes the scallops a little bit more tender you have that part is tough when it's cooked down so do yourself a favor i know it takes a little bit of extra time but if you want tender little scallops tender bites that's the way to do it some of these i already was able to do whenever i'm cleaning them and then of course we're gonna restrain them get all the little bits of the guts off of there so that way they're nice and clean it's a task but it's nice to be able to eat scallops straight from the ocean I'll tell you that fresh never frozen all right what you got going on there I got some seafood seasoning from Maddie's Market right here in Steenhatchee. That's the one and only grocery store in Steenhatchee other than, I think there's a dollar store, but we go to Maddie's. We go they to got Maddie's. about everything you want at Maddie's. Gas and groceries. Yeah. We're just gonna pull a little bit on there, give them a little stir. They're dry, so just for your reference, um, after I rinsed them really good in the colander and got off all of the extra guts and everything, um, I put laid out a couple of paper towels and patted them dry because um, you don't want to put wet scallops and bacon grease. Though. Yeah, or wet. So you, you don't ever want to cook scallops wet. Whether you, wherever you get them from, fresh or from the store, always wrap them in paper towels when you get them and let them sit in the fridge for a while. Let them get all that moisture out of them. Yeah. That's your Chef Jim's tip of the day. <laughs> All right, we got the bacon sizzling. We're about to throw these scallops in. Y'all ready for this? I'm gonna make a little well right here in the middle. Other no, other, otherwise known as a hole. A hole, a well. Scallops are like shrimp. Very, very, they cook very, very quick. All right, are you guys ready to watch the magic happen? Ooh. You mixing it all up all happy like? Oh yeah, baby. Like you say, you can't go wrong with bacon and onions, but then when you add in the scallops, mm, they're gonna get almost like a little opaque, that opaque whiteness. Once they get to that color, then you know that they're pretty much done. 
these cook pretty quick, so you need to pay attention. And don't do what Jim did earlier. He didn't pay attention. He burnt the chicken. <laughs> so we started. That was out. somebody else's fault no, on the reason that I burnt the chicken. We, but we're not gonna. We can't talk about that on YouTube. We started over. But luckily, we had four more pieces, and our BFFs just got here, Jeff and Amber, so they get to enjoy this with us tonight. See, it all worked out good. It did. It was perfect timing. And I would say that these guys are just about done. Here we go. I'm not really convinced it'll focus on this. Yeah, buddy. Alright, folks, let's dig in. I'm hungry. That chicken looks. Damn, I did good on that. On the second round. Yeah, it looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> did you get goosebumps? That just made me happy. Mm. You want a little bite? Oh my god, they are so tender. Those are those are killer. Try that. That's the way to cook scallops. Yeah. I'm not going to cook them any other way. Cut that balsamic on. bourbon glazed chicken. Try mm. a piece of that, see what you think. Oh. This is the... Yeah, hold that up here so that everybody can see it. That's Hang the on, glaze. it's not focused yet. Give me one second. Mm, still not focused. Hang on. There it goes. We got that from the Quincy Cattle Company. And they actually deliver a long, long ways. You can get a whole cow, quarter cow. <laughs> How's that glaze? You're going to love it. Am I? Mm -hmm. You know I love that balsamic. It is so good. Oh my goodness. They have blueberry, elderberry, bourbon strawberry and i think one more yeah they had a whole shelf um, full of different ones okay i don't know if you guys heard that earlier but the girl was telling us why they don't do the oil infused oil it actually reduces the shelf life of the oil if you infuse it um so make sure that you look so at that's your, why they only do the that's why they're only doing the vinegars because they want to keep their product for longer so yeah let's eat i'm hungry you're hungry and we got hanging out and relaxing to do yep look who showed up oh yeah dinner time <laughs> <laughs> let's eat thank you for tuning in to our channel if you like our last video you can give us a big thumbs up if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. See you guys later.